other uh, keys about uh, nitrogen, soil balance. If you can improve your CalMag ratio, uh, Gary Zimmer, my great friend from the US, uh, he coined this statement, and boy is it a true one. He also coined calcium trackable minerals bore on the steering wheel, so he's coined some neat, neat little statements. I like those little powerhouse statements. But uh, Gary always says, you got to earn the right to reduce nitrogen. Uh, and he's, he's so right. And what does he mean by you got to earn the right to reduce nitrogen? You could listen to this course and say, yeah, I'm using way too much nitrogen. I'll burn out all that carbon with it. Uh, I've got this high magnesium soil. Uh, I'm going to drop half of my nitrogen and it's going to do the planet good. Well, you made a mistake in terms of your profitability because the simple reality is that a high magnesium soil requires 50% more nitrogen to do the same job. So uh, why? Well, magnesium is a, a, a nitrate antagonist, so there's one reason it shuts down the performance of nitrogen. Number two, uh, you don't have much recycling happening in a soil that doesn't breathe. You don't have much, uh, sorry, fixation happening. You want to get a bunch of nitrogen for free, uh, and the organisms who fix nitrogen are the most aerobic. Azotobacter is a free-living nitrogen fixer. It's the most aerobic organism on the planet. It needs more oxygen than anyone else. Uh, and you know, if you've got a high magnesium soil, you're not going to get much oxygen in that closed soil, so you're not going to fix much nitrogen for free. And then we've got nitrogen recycling. The roots, the crop residues, 16% uh, of the protein is nitrogen. Uh, and you recycle that. And to do that, you've got to have a whole bunch of organisms capable, all of whom are aerobic, all of whom slow down considerably in a high magnesium, tight, closed soil. So you've got to earn the right. You've got to improve your CalMag ratio, and now you can drop your nitrogen. Now, how did that, what happened to this bloke, Elbrecht, who came up with these concepts? He was in, at one point, the prospective new Secretary for Agriculture was his best friend. If it had gone the right way, my goodness, we would have lived in a different world and a much, much healthier world because we would have copied the Yanks as we've often tended to do, particularly when they would have had that kind of success, uh, and we would have followed that mo balancing model rather than what we've done, which is this dumbed-down, three-mineral overdose uh, that has salted up and poisoned many of our soils to some degree. Uh, we would have gone with the balanced mo model, but he didn't win the election. And what happened to Elbrick? Well, he had 29 states where people were into his ideas. He had multiple published, published, published in many countries. Uh, and what happened was that the, a bunch of fertilizer boys were having a convention. They had some beers afterwards and they started comparing notes. And they said, oh my goodness, all 29 of the countries where Elbrick, of the states where Elbrick is working, where this, this professor of soil science from Missouri, where he's working, uh, we're down 40% in our nitrogen sales. We can't let this continue. So they pulled their funds and they raised $2 million. doesn't seem like much, but it was 1957, probably $20 million now. And they took that little package of cash and they said to the University of Missouri, oh, we'd like to donate uh, something to your university, but there's one condition. We want you to sideline and discredit this bloke called Elbrick. And the university said, Elbrick? $2 million. Elbrick, $2 million. And they chose the $2 million, which is $20 million today. And they discredited him. He spent his days in a little room out the back. If it hadn't been for Charles Walters, one of the big players and one of my heroes in this whole movement, if it hadn't been for him recognising the injustice of this whole thing and actually uh, interviewing thousands of hours on the old cassettes, which he then translated through to, to CDs, uh, of interviews with Albrecht, publishing his papers in three volumes called Albrecht, Albrecht Papers 1, 2 and 3, uh, and resurrecting those ideas, and then uh, co-writing Neil Kinsey's Hands-On Agronomy, very famous book in this field, about uh, an agronomist out there in the world, and huge scale, adopting Albrecht principles and the benefits and the potentials and how it worked. And Neil's can't write, but Charles is a great writer, and so Neil just talked and Charles wrote, and it became a best-selling book. Uh, but that's... That's the deal, um, you know, that's earning the right to produce. The guys that had done that had reduced 40% of their nitrogen and the chemical companies shut it down. So if we'd gone that path, that's the whole story. Balance your soil and you can reduce nitrogen is the point of this point.